everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. It's a beautiful evening here in central Pennsylvania. And guess who came to visit? The 1996 Geo Prism. This vehicle was featured in uh, the video with changing out the piston rings. It was burning about a quart every 400 miles. Now it's here for an oil change inspection and a very interesting complaint, the speedometer. The new owner of this uh, vehicle, one of my buddies, he says the speedometer just does its own thing. Well, let's see what it does. Still smells like a dead rodent in here. I uh, found a dead mouse under the driver's seat. But that's that's a separate issue. Oh, okay, key on. Apparently we're accelerating. We're not really going anywhere. Shut the key off. And it goes back to zero. Okay. <laughs> let's uh let's take it for a spin. Whoa! Hold on! <laughs> Whew, did you feel that acceleration? Uh, I know this thing's fast, but I didn't know it was going to be that fast. Key off. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> take this thing to the track. Um, yeah, so what could the potential uh, issues be here? Yeah, you might say vehicle speed sensor or uh, alternator ripple or something, but the miles, the trip meter and the, the miles there, let's see how many miles he has on there, almost 258,000, <clears> uh, that counts normally. You know, I took it up and down the lane, the odometer and the trip meter work fine. So I'm not worried about the trip or uh, the speed sensor. I think there's a problem with the actual, you know, needle motor circuit board, whatever. So my game plan is to take this cluster out and see if we can find some, I don't know, cracked solder joints because I don't know where you can find a new actuator for one of these things. Junkyard maybe. So let's pull in the shop and see if we can uh, figure this thing out. So it's tearing apart the dash on some of these old cars. Actually, it's not that big of a deal. A couple screws, I think, and this thing should just pop right out of here. Boom. Piece of cake. And no, the steering wheel does not tilt, so just have to kind of improvise. Uh, what else we got? Four screws in there. Now I did look on Google at the Toyota Nations forum and apparently this issue does happen. It's not very common, but on Toyota Corollas of this vintage, sometimes you get an erratic speedometer and there's some people who have either replaced capacitors or just refloat some solder joints. So I'm hoping we get lucky on this one. It'll be a no parts required repair. There's that. Try to see how many. Connections this thing has so three three 
three bulb connectors. This last guy is kind of a pain to get to. Okay. All right, we're out. We'll it take one minute, maybe. All right, we're on the bench. Uh, I think two more Phillips screws and the white plastic should separate from the black. Then, I'm not sure if we have to take the clear panel off to get this, you know, remove the needles or not. But we'll see how, uh, how this thing's put together. So let's start by undoing some of these clips. Easy enough, okay. One, two, three, sweet. Okay, that comes off very nicely. And now, Denzo. How does this detach from From the back side. That's what I want to know. So I guess there's four Phillips screws right here. Let's see if the whole speedometer assembly will just come right out. These screws, they don't just hold the whole assembly in. They actually make contacts with these you know, on this flexible circuit board. They actually have solder joints on there too. Yep, it looks like the whole thing's about to come out. Gentle, gentle. Wow. Well, that's it. That's the whole speedometer trip assembly. Now on this circuit board, let's look for cracked solder joints. We can reflow them all, I guess. But whatever controls this, um, you know, actuator it should be right in the middle here these four main connections so I'm going to take a close look here see if I can see any evidence of cracked solder joints and then uh, if I do we'll reflow them and cross our fingers all right I took a close look at our solder joints so we're worried about these four right here and then the traces, you know, wherever they go. And the only one that was really suspect is this guy right here. It looks a little crusty. So what I'm going to do is reflow probably this row right here. Um, and that goes to a main chip. There is hiding on the back side. And that controls, you know, the stepper motor, the needle little coils in there. Use magnetic fields to uh, actually turn the needle. You can, act, you can see through that center hole that like little copper windings. So let's, uh, let's try to do that. You could also measure resistances <clears throat> to make sure all of the windings are intact. I guess we could do that. But let's try reflowing these joints and then See if that helps. All right, we got our soldering iron nice and hot. So let's go along along the row. You guys can uh, go this way maybe. There's one pin on the back side here. 
There's two. There's three. There's four. There's five. Here's the crappy one. Six. Seven. And eight. I guess we'll reflow the other side here too. That looks pretty good to me. Make sure there's nothing else obviously wrong. <laughs> it looks pretty good. I'm just going to do these for good luck. Okay, turn off our solder iron, and then and then also noticing that well, I guess this isn't really an issue, but right in between these contacts, right in here, zoom out a little bit, that drive the you know the numbers. There's a little bit of Frost contamination between the contacts. It's like yellow, crusty stuff. So I'm just going to rub that out of the way. <laughs> Alright, let's give it a shot. All right, so we're messing with the speedometer here. Got the Pico scope out. Yes, I know this is uh, interesting but unnecessary. However, however, I think we can fix the old unit. We don't have to do this swap tronics, reset the odometer, all that nonsense. Here's the setup. We just have a battery voltage on our power supply. That's connected to the ignition and ground pins on the actual speedometer unit that I took out of the cluster. You can see there's the ignition and ground pins corresponding to the board. So this thing's powered up. Now you can see the needle right now it's it's doing its thing. Sometimes it rises, sometimes it falls. And on the oscilloscope we got two channels. I'm going to touch it, see the four pins for, there's one, two, three, four, those are the two coils for our needle. And you can see this trace right here, the red trace, if I can make a good contact, see how it's decaying from 8 volts and now it's going back up to 12. Well, that corresponds to our needle position. See the needle's going up. And our trace is also varying. Now the only way I can back probe these is just with a needle. So, you know, as the trace decays, our needle slowly creeps up. See, there it goes. 15, 20, and our trace is going lower and lower and lower. After some time of poking around, I discovered that <clears throat> on the circuit board back here, I just started kind of touching it. And sometimes the needle would drop right back down to zero and this trace would stabilize. And I can demonstrate that. Uh, I guess I can't show you everything, I'll just focus you on the scope. So watch the 
the red trace there. So right now it's steady at around, see it's going down, 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 down. And as soon as I put my finger over this one area in the, cl in the uh, cluster, boom, it jumps right back up and the needle drops to zero. And the process repeats. See the needle dropped to zero. And I was touching the circuit board right up here, very, very lightly. So is one of these components, is there a bad solder joint uh, on one of these components? There are some surface mounted resistors, a couple capacitors up here, the, the main controller chip, resistor, etc. And sometimes you can see the trace goes up all on its own. Even if you like stress the circuit board a little bit, it's crazy how sensitive this thing is. Well, in order to pinpoint, uh, you know, exactly which component it was, I got a second channel out right here. And I started probing, you know, checking for voltages at these components. And what I found was there's a correlation between the voltage on this trace right here before the surface mount resistor and the voltage on our control pin you know on the coil for the actual needle winding so and we can demonstrate that on the scope so I'm going to be probing let's see right here you can either probe here or here and these resistors, you can follow the trace. It goes from, let's see here, follow, follow the needle. So the trace comes here, through this resistor, up through here, to this resistor, and then to this big trace. <clears throat> okay, so basically, um, I want to monitor voltage right here after the resistor and right here that's before this 153 surface mount resistor okay oh, it's, it's kind of a hard shot to make this took took some time and just fiddling however all right and you know the needles climbing right now and here's the voltage See that? There's the correlation. The voltage is rising, 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 rising. And the red trace is falling gradually. And the needle is actually also starting to rise. As soon as I and on the other side of the resistor, the voltage is steady at zero. And there it's at 0 0.4 volts. Very interesting. And look at that. If I push on the resistor and the voltage drops to zero, our red line goes back up to near battery voltage and our needle drops rock steady to zero. So right now, I'm suspecting a bad solder joint right here, right on the surface mount resistor 153, bam. So I was measuring 0 0.4 volts here and 0 volts on this side. And as soon as I push in this res resistor, this drops to 0, our voltage on this pin goes back up to, you know, closer to battery voltage and the actual needle drops to zero where it's supposed to be. It doesn't keep migrating. So that I think is enough proof to get our soldering iron out and reflow just this one joint right here and then we can hook everything back up, put it back on the car, take it for a test drive and that should be the final fix. We won't need to swap out you know the actual circuit board or the motor or the gears 
So with just a little bit of time and logical deduction and just kind of making this thing act up, that one little solder joint is making the needle go crazy. Uh, let's, uh, let's try the repair. Alright, so just to finish up the speedometer repair verification, uh, so we have the solder joints reflowed right here on these two resistors and some of the other ones around. And a cool way to bench test this is to use a signal generator. Now this guy, uh, it's a PicoScope, the 2004A, and check this out. AWG means Arbitrary Wave Generator. The expensive automotive 4-channel scope does not have this function, but the cheaper 2000 series does. So this guy here can output any arbitrary wave so if we go to signal generator under this menu maximum of one volt so two volts peak to peak and we can set the offset here so uh, here let's explain the setup so from the arbitrary wave generator I have the lead going to channel 1 and right here I have a, a T so uh, the signal and the ground teed off and those go to the ground on our speedometer and right here I have it disconnected the signal that we want to input to our speedometer that's like our vehicle speed sensor input <clears throat> so First, let's see what the signal looks like uh, coming out of our signal generator. So, plus or minus, let's do plus or minus 5 volts. Uh, let's see, drop that guy down. This is 10 hertz. You can see that square wave right there. And we can actually set the amplitude that's maxed out at 1 volt and the offset. So if we set the offset to 0 volts, right there. So now the wave is being generated from minus 1 to 1 volt. And that's our maximum amplitude. Okay? Well, from minus, from minus 2 to 2, that's our maximum amplitude. Now, the offset. See, right now, we can't offset this since we're taking up the full amplitude already. So, we need to dial this back down to 1 volt peak to peak, and we, then we can offset it to... one volt. There we go. So it shifted. It is storming outside. <laughs> so that's a, that's going to be our input signal. Now on the speedometer, as we saw, if we just connect it to the signal wire, it's going to be positive <clears throat> 12 volts. It's like a pull down design. So let's connect our signal to the input and look what happens. It gets shifted up, now it's you know centered around three, so from two to four volts. That's our signal now. And it just so happens that as we dial up the frequency, our speed actually changes, which is awesome. So let's uh, change this time base to 10 milliseconds per division and that way as soon as we change the frequency 40, 50, 60 so actually the hertz here almost correspond to the miles per hour 
70, 80, 90, 100. So it's 100 hertz, 100 cycles per second. And we can even see the odometer is indeed counting up. So it's like we're going, you know, 90 miles an hour. I think that's pretty neat. So our speedometer on the bench, it's working fine. You know, the soldering seemed to help. We have to solder those, you know, resolder the two resistors. And this needle is, you know, steady. It doesn't want to migrate on its own. Even if we, you know, disconnect the signal, we'll go back down to zero. And it's definitely just stays at zero, you know, rock solid. Doesn't migrate. And we can check the calibration of this guy. Say, you know, we're going 64 miles an hour. How fast is our trip meter count? We should go about one mile per minute. So we can do all kinds of checks. But I think it's pretty cool that we can use an, a signal generator to, you know, I wish it went from 12 to 0, but even this wave here, 2 volts peak to peak, is enough to trigger our speedometer. So there you go. Uh, actually a viewer and a good friend of mine sent me this to play around with uh, just because I didn't have the signal generator on my automotive version of the Pico. So that I think uh, is a good first use <laughs> of this tool. Uh, it's really neat. The only drawback here is you can measure, you know, what's the limit here? It says 20 volt peak max. The automotive one's like 200 volts, you know, for measuring ignition pulses. So this guy's a little more sensitive, but if you use it with an attenuator, these on eBay you can get for, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred bucks. So very affordable version. If someone says, oh, I can't afford a scope, this is what you want to look for. It's way, um, you know, combined with a little tablet like this, I'd say it's more affordable and more powerful than, say, a Vantage Pro or, you know, any of the snap-on scopes. In terms of the oscilloscope, it doesn't have the component test meter or whatever, but as an oscilloscope, this is a fantastic starting point. I wish I knew about this a while ago before I bought, you know, the standalone scopes with the knobs which don't have a good buffer. Uh, this thing is, you know, the software is just as good as the fancier Picos. You know, it's just a two-channel though. Um, highly recommended. So this guy, <laughs> we've already gone 10 miles here. Um, but we're gonna put this in the car, go for a final test drive, cross your fingers that it'll work. It'll stay working. And that should be it. All right, moment of truth. Key on. Hooray! Can we fix it? Let's take it for a test drive. All right, let's check it out. That is awesome. You like the the backlighting? Let's see, is this any better? It works, hooray! Sweet. Got this sweet LED light in here. Anyways, that's it. That's the fix. Just reflow some solder joints that seems seem to help it. Um, Toyota Corolla Geo Prism. There's probably still a lot of these out in the roads. The uh, 1990 whatever three to seven models. Um, I don't know if any other models have this little issue, but no parts required. Just pull the cluster and get your soldering iron out. Good to go, right? All right. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. With just a little bonus footage here, we'll do an oil level check. 
Uh, let's see, the oil change is due at 259,000 miles, and we're at 258, and that's a 5,000 mile interval. So it's gone 4,000 miles on this oil change. Let's see. Boom, check that out. It's still like a golden color, and it's still right near the full mark. You guys want me to wipe off the dipstick and do that just for the for the naysayers? You can do that. Clean dipstick. Boom. Full. Just like I left it. So awesome. The piston rings are working fantastically. Uh, if you remember, we had some people commenting, oh, you should have honed it, you should have like ran on this, broken it in, all that stuff, unnecessary. We're still running on those pitted valves. It's, uh, the owner says it gets like 35 miles to the gallon commuting to and from work. Beautiful. So, that's it. I, I mean, I'll still do an oil change on it, but it's, it actually looks uh, pretty decent right now. Um, that's about it. So, bonus footage. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.